A surge of attacks from Yemen's Iranian-backed Houthi rebels on ships traveling through the Red Sea continues to disrupt the global supply chain. Since November, Houthi rebels have launched more than 50 attacks on international shipping lanes in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden in response to Israel's war with Hamas. The U.S. and other countries are defending the area, but the attacks have not stopped. U.S. officials say those attacks and the threat of them are driving U.S. prices and causing delivery delays for critical humanitarian items such as food and medicine in places where it's needed most. CBS News reporter Zach Hudak, Hudak sorry, Zach, has been looking into this for me. Sorry, Zach. Um, let's start with um, uh, how these, these attacks are affecting the, the global supply chain. John, 30% of the global container trade goes through the Red Sea and then through the Suez Canal. You have to get through the Red Sea to get to the Suez Canal. And since the 19th century, the Suez Canal has been basically a shortcut to get from Asia over to Europe and to North America without having to loop the entire way south around Africa. The result of these attacks is that we're seeing a 50% decline in the traffic of these mm. ships going through the Red Sea, going through the Suez Canal, and instead looping the entire way around the Cape of Good Hope, and then the whole way back up north to Europe or up north and across the ocean to North America. And so how is this affecting just regular old Americans? Well, the most direct result is it costs more to do these shipments. These shipping companies are paying more in wages because the, the journey takes two to four weeks longer, paying much more in fuel because it's about 4,500 nautical miles longer than it would be otherwise. And those prices are, th those costs are passed on to consumers when they go and buy goods. What's most remarkable here, though, is that these drones being used are not the ultra-advanced Reaper drones we hear, hear about the U.S. military conducting these complex strikes with. And these are the drones being used by the Houthis yes. against these ships with the big U.S. military there picking them off. You know, they're causing mayhem with these drones you're talking about. And they're using them basically as suicide drones. They are like the modern-day suicide bomber, just there's no pilot who has to die. They're just flying them into these ships. So it's, in some ways, a primitive operation. But the result is that they are deterring these ships from going through this land, through this uh, sea. And as a result, they are effectively imposing economic sanctions on European countries, on the United States. And they are not even an official government, and they are managing to do this. So and your point is that, that even if they're not hitting specific ships, nobody wants business with these, these suicide drones. So I'm, not just, I'm just not going to hang out in the area. That's exactly right. And I talked to a professor earlier today at UMass Amherst who studies the supply chain, has been following this really closely, has been consulting with some of these shipping companies. One of the biggest costs they're facing is the increase in insurance sure. because of the increased risk. It just costs them more the second they send a boat onto the waters. So now as a final question, how does, how does the, what's the end game in this or does this end? The Houthis claim that this is an act of backing Gaza. They're doing this to hurt the allies of Israel as the Israel-Hamas war wages on. But I spoke with uh, Thomas Juno at the University of Ottawa earlier today. He's studied the Houthis for a long time, and he predicts that that would not bring an end to it. He says that, in fact, the Israel-Hamas war was a pretext for these attacks in the Red Sea, and that even if there's a ceasefire or something like that, and there's a temporary pause to the attacks, the Houthis, based on everything he's studied, would have no reason to keep that pause going. They will eventually find another excuse to start these attacks again and get the world looking at them. And hopefully, he says, their, their final goal is to become the internationally recognized government of Yemen. That's what they want in the long run. So it doesn't really matter what happens in Israel. Right. A temporary problem that's going to be maybe a long-term problem. Zach Hudag, thank you so much, Zach. Thank really you, appreciate it.